Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. Yes, it is. And it's Christmas week and we're yes. so jolly. <laughs> I, <laughs> we sound jolly. <laughs> Holly jolly. <laughs> Holly jolly Christmas. Up in here. Um, I'm like a little bit sad because, well, <clears throat> not super sad, but it, that it's Christmas already. And like, I feel like I, I don't, I'm not ready to get rid of my decorations. And I usually do that, you know, like right after New Year's. And so I feel like I only have a couple more weeks. What? Yeah. It's got, this is weird. It's a weird year, which is mm-hmm. saying a lot because last year was super weird. And maybe it's just like a transition year and nobody knows how to behave or something. I don't know. It's just so strange. I feel, I don't feel Christmassy. Which I hate because I'm normally like, I normally am jolly and I just right. don't feel jolly. So I need to yeah. get on board. I need to get myself together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's just flying by. Like all of a sudden it was Thanksgiving and then I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't even thought about Christmas. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, Christmas is here. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I haven't really felt very jolly either. Yeah. My kids yeah. are done with school. Which is good because we've been, you know, all the parties and dress like your favorite character day and let's, you know, add some things to your plate when you don't have enough going on. Maybe mm-hmm. That's why I don't mm-hmm. feel jolly. I don't know. <laughs> right. right. True. True. There's just so much happening. But, yeah. and it's not even cold here. I do. I think that matters too, like the weather. So. Oh my gosh. It's like in the Tell 70s. It. It's weird. The, what, what in the holy heck is going on? Tornadoes. And all these. Right, exactly. So, <clears throat> guys, I was away, whatever, a couple weeks ago for a wedding, and I left my children for the first time on their own. And you know, like, it was like a test weekend. It was going to be quick, and I was like running through all the things that could possibly go wrong, and we're not there to like help. But we had a million neighbors that were ready to like jump in if we needed them to, and it was great. But do you know what? Tornadoes <laughs> in December was not one of the things on my list as a thought. <laughs> like. Nothing like what? So Friday night, we get there Friday night, and I'm getting all these texts and calls. And like, do we need to go get the kids? I'm like, what the heck's happening? Oh, the tornado alarms are going off behind my house. It wasn't it like my like a mile and a half from your house, one like leveled a building or something? Oh, no, 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 no. that one wasn't that close. So it was, oh. that was 50 miles oh. away. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, with the, from the Amazon facility. That oh, was, okay, yeah, that one. Whew. But, um, but the alarms here kept going off. Normally, like, it goes off one time. It's like, okay. But, like, Isaiah was like, it went off so many times. So he's like, that was the only thing that freaked me out. But he handled it like a champ and was totally fine. Went to the basement. So, wow. Yeah. I hope he got a good tip. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah. He had a set amount, but I was like, that kid's getting a bonus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, it's terrible, the devastation and everything that happened. We certainly, mm-hmm. you know... Our hearts definitely go out to the what six states is unbelievable. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's weird. We're in a, it's it's a weird time, <laughs> right? And then again in Minnesota and them. What I mean, day of day of recording this last night it happened all again up in Minnesota. Oh Wisconsin, yeah, all that like they were getting the same thing. I think there was six of them that touched. I think well maybe I'm making that up now, but there was a bunch of stuff happening there. So, so it's an end of the world yeah. business. I know. It's because it's too warm, and then all of a sudden it goes cold for one day, and then it's too warm again. <sighs> Whatever. And this has been your weather from Crimes and Closets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Savory walks around the house with stupid global warming. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So we hope you guys have a great Christmas because we're not going to talk to you again until after it's mm-hmm. over. So we hope if you're celebrating Christmas that you get lots of hugs and Santa's really good to you and you eat lots of food like I plan to do in my Christmas pajamas. Okay. Yes. Same here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So happy holidays. And before we do that, we wanted to tell you that... um The Monday after New Year's, we are not going to be releasing a regularly scheduled crime episode. So prepare yourselves that you will have an empty Monday on January 3rd after the new year. 
we're still thinking of something fun we could do. So, you know, stick with us as far as like social media and announcements and stuff and we'll figure something out. But no episode on that Monday. But there is an episode today. I do have a crime today. Awesome. I'm excited. It is not jolly. Oh, okay. It's not what we do here. So stay tuned. Okay, Christy, this week, this week, we are going mm-hmm. to Nebraska. <gasps> we haven't been to Nebraska yet, have I was we? thinking, I mean, I've personally never been to Nebraska, but I don't think we've ever done a case in Nebraska. No, I've not been to Nebraska either. Well, this is, I mean, new for both of us. This is, I know people there. Just, oh, wait, sorry. We did go to Nebraska once, very briefly, for the Halloween collab last year when the guy with the um, breathalyzer costume yes. got pulled over. He was he, from Nebraska. Because remember, he went to like Corn Husker like, rehab or something. It's called the like Corn that. Husker State. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely done. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. But very we're back. Just Here we are. Here we are back in Nebraska. <laughs> Good to see you again, Nebraska. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good to be back. So <laughs> this is, we missed you. This is the story of Sydney Loof. Mm, okay. Nothing? Okay. Nothing. Sydney Irene Loof was born August 21st of 1993 in Broken Bow, Nebraska, to parents George and Susie Loof. She was one of three children. She had a brother and a sister. Sydney loved the outdoors. She loved fishing and golfing. She was very caring. She was known for having a loving and kind heart. She had lots of friends. She was very pretty. She was very pretty, really pretty Mm. girl. She was very passionate about animals, and she had a cat, sweet little cat, that she named Mimsy, which was like her baby. Mm -hmm. She was very artistic, very open-minded, and she had a tattoo on her arm on her forearm, a big one, that said, everything will be wonderful someday. Oh, how nice. During her young adult life, she moved from her small town in Nebraska to Lincoln, Nebraska, which is the capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where the other story was. Oh, was in Lincoln. Oh, it all goes down and to I Lincoln, Lincoln, does it? And I know people in Lincoln, too. Mm-hmm. Hey, people in Lincoln. Yeah. So this is a couple hours away from her hometown, a little bit less. And we are now in November of 2017. Okay. So not long ago. I know. I, I, I almost sometimes think it's kind of cool to do recent. Ones. Mm-hmm. This is real recent. Yeah, yeah. So Sydney was 24 years old at the time, and she was working at a store called Menards. Have you ever heard of oh, Menards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Menards is like um, Home Depot. We had them in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yes. So That's they, where they started. They, I think. It is where they started because yeah. I looked it up. They just opened up a Menards in my hometown in West Virginia, and it is like oh, big news. Big They're news. awesome. I like them. Mm, I've never gone. I've got to be honest, but it does seem like a very nice home improvement outdoor type it is. store. I think we have one here, actually. Can't remember. Everyone go to, sure have Call yeah. us. go to Menards. Call us. Go to Menards. So Sydney was. She's working at Menards. She just works, you know, at the as cashier um, there. And she was living in an apartment by herself with her cat. So she was a single girl. She moved to the big city. She was spreading her wings, had a job, had her own apartment, very exciting time in her life. And she wanted to make friends and find a possible special someone. So she sometimes would use the dating app Tender to meet people. Mm. We all know about Tender. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I never used it, but I know it. You did. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You've got secrets, but <laughs> all right. In November of 2017, Sydney met a 25 year old woman on Tinder whose name was Audrey. So Audrey and Sydney both swiped right. And the two of them began chatting and they eventually exchanged numbers and began texting each other. And they went on their first date on November 14th, a couple days after the swipe. Mm -hmm. Sydney picked up Audrey or one or the other, I don't know who, and they drove around and they 
listened to music and smoked weed and talked and just kind of drove around and got to know each other. They hit it off. They really liked each other. And so they decided they were going to go out again the next day. Hmm. So they parted ways. They went home. Sydney goes home. She's very excited about this new possible relationship. She tells her mom about it. She tells her sister and some of her friends about this Audrey person. And she talked about how much she liked her and how excited she was for the date the next day. So the next day, November 15th, Sydney went to work at Menards and she got off like, or, you know, end of the afternoon. And she sent a Snapchat photo of herself that said she was ready for her date. She's very cute, you know, sends Snapchat, ready to go on my date. So later that night, her mom called her to see how the date had gone, but she didn't get an answer. Mm. So her friends are also calling, texting, you know, just like normal, what's up? Like you and I would call or text each other and nobody can actually get a hold of her. But nobody really thought a lot of it just independently because they thought, well, she probably just had a great time on this date. Maybe things got more serious. Maybe they stayed together that night. Right. And they all don't know that all everyone can't get in touch with exactly. her. Exactly. It's all right. like individually. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I can't get a hold of her. She must be having a great time. But the next day, November 16th, Sydney did not show up for work. And by that point, her phone was going straight to voicemail. So both of these things are very unusual for Sydney. And her close friends and family now are starting to talk to each other. And they're realizing that nobody had heard from her since before she left for her date. So her family drove to Lincoln and go to Sydney's apartment. And they find that everything is totally normal in her apartment. Her cat was there, but her cat had been left with no food or water. So that's mm -hmm. very strange. Mm -hmm. Nothing was taken. All of Sydney's personal belongings were still there. Her clothes were st still there. Her makeup was still there. Her glasses were still there, which I think was a red flag for them because she wore contacts. And so, you know, we have to take our glasses out or our contacts out mm -hmm. at nighttime and we put our glasses on. So it's kind of weird if she was going to stay the night somewhere, she would have taken her glasses. So they know something's up. She probably Well, unless she didn't know she was spending the night somewhere. It's true, but it just seems like she but. had intended to come home. Right. And right. Yeah. Not. So that was a yeah. red flag for mm -hmm. them. So they call and report Sydney missing. So all they knew was that Sydney had had a date the night before with this girl named Audrey from Tinder and her friend had a Tinder photo of Audrey because Sydney had shared it with her. So like Sydney had probably screenshotted is my guess the mm -hmm. photo and was like, this is the girl that I'm going out with. Look how cute she is. So her friend created a Tinder account with similar profile settings as Sydney. And she kept swiping until she found that photo of Audrey. Mm -hmm. So she was like saying, um, you know, this young mid-20s girl searching for somebody in this area who is a girl, you know, whatever, and eventually ended up finding the photo of Audrey. So she messaged Audrey pretending to be interested in her. And mm. eventually, after a few messages, she got Audrey to give her her phone number. Oh, look at this little I'm here. Find salute. you a friend. Find you a friend, <laughs> like Sydney's friend, right? Yeah, right. I so have one. The fr yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> um, so the friend then took that number to the police, and the police were able to track it back to who it belonged to, and it ended up belonging to a 27-year-old woman named Bailey Boswell. So oh, not an Audrey. Not Audrey. No. Oh. Bailey lived with her boyfriend, Aubrey Trail, who was 51, by the way. So Bailey Wait. is 27. Audrey, oh, okay. Aubrey is 51. And they live in a basement apartment in a nearby town called Wilbur, Nebraska, which is just right outside of Lincoln. Okay. Okay. So the police call Bailey and they leave her a message. They say they're trying to get a hold of her. We're looking for this girl, Sydney. We know you, you know, we're in contact with her. And they also went to their apartment in Wilbur, but the couple was gone. They weren't there. So mm -hmm. they ask around, 
you know, to the neighbors. And the neighbor said nobody had seen them for a few days. But one neighbor did report smelling a very strong bleach smell coming from their apartment. She said it was so strong that she had to open the windows in her own apartment to air it out because the smell was like coming through the wall, I guess, or something. Well, you know, that's not just a little laundry. A little laundry. (laughs) It's not just a load. (laughs) Right. It's that much bleach. It's not just a load of laundry. Well, right. Yeah. This was definitely a red flag. So police find out that Bailey and Aubrey both have a criminal history, but their criminal history is for like fraud, um, writing bad checks, theft, like various scams, nothing violent, but they do have a criminal Mm -hmm. history and they were not supposed to leave the state. You know, they both are like on parole and things like that. So, and they're gone. So we don't know where they are. So that's a red flag too. Mm -hmm. So police search Sydney's phone records and they find that there are over 140 messages exchanged between Sydney and this Bailey over a four day period. So they were messaging a lot. Mm -hmm. Sydney's phone last pinged on the evening of November 15th. So that's the, the, when they were, their date was Mm -hmm. in Wilbur where they lived. And the last message that was sent by Sydney to Bailey was around 645. And she just said, I'm here. Like I'm here. I'm at your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. About 30 minutes Mm -hmm. after that, Sydney's phone is shut off and there is no other activity on it at all. Oh my. There's also no activity on her bank account. There's no trace of her. Like she's gone. Mm. After the 15th, Sydney like is a ghost as far as like tracking her. Right. So in the meantime, when they're searching all of these phone records, the police get a call back from Bailey. Bailey says, I'm out of town with my boyfriend, Aubrey. She says, yes, I met Sydney on Tinder. I messaged with her. We went on some dates. She tells police that on November 14th, the two of them met up. They drove around. They smoked pot. They both went home. They met up again the next day on the 15th, did the same thing, drove around, smoked pot. They went back to Bailey's apartment, smoked some more pot. And then Sydney had asked Bailey to drop her off at a friend's house. So Bailey did. They made plans to meet up at a casino that coming weekend but Bailey said that she hadn't heard from Sydney since then. So she dropped her off at a friend's house. Hey, let's hang out at, at the casino this weekend. But she never heard from her. So I guess they just went out of town. <laughs> I don't know. And so when they were hanging out, I'm sure you probably don't know this, but it probably is. At Bailey's apartment, her boyfriend, Aubrey, was not there, I guess. We don't know. We don't know. I think okay. allegedly – he was, I think. I'm not sure. That's oh, that's okay. not clear. Okay. okay. I mean, we know. Well, okay. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. So police ask Bailey and Aubrey if they'll come into the station to answer some questions, do a formal statement about the last time that they'd seen Sydney. And Bailey said that they couldn't because they were out of town and they wouldn't tell police where they were. Mm. So that's weird. And the two of them are named persons of interest in Sydney's disappearance. And the police start looking for them. Okay. So we'll find out what happens next right after this break. So now that the two of them have been named persons of interest and they're being super sketchy and not where they're supposed to be, police get a warrant to search Aubrey and Bailey's basement apartment. Okay. So the apartment, they go in and it's like a pigsty. There's a lot of dirt. There's clutter everywhere, except for one room, which was extremely pristinely cleaned. It had mm, been, smell like bleach? Yes. It had been wiped down. Everything had been cleaned. The walls, everything had been wiped down. And there's that strong odor of bleach. Also in the apartment, police find and take note of some suspicious things. They found a dog leash but no dog. They find a sauna suit. Do you know what that is? A sauna, like, like as in a sauna? Like, so it's a suit that you put on that makes you sweat. It's like wrestlers use it sometimes when they have to like drop weight. 
Do they? Is it almost look like a plastic bag? Like sometimes exactly. people run in them or something. That's okay. exactly yeah, what it looks right. like. I didn't know that it was called a sauna suit. Me either. I had to that Google it. So they found one of those, but the crotch was cut out. Weird. Hmm. They found zip ties. They found a hatchet, and they found plastic drop cloths, which looked like they had blood on them, and a book on anatomy. So. These are just amongst the strange things that they took from this home. Is this like Dexter's Kill Room? I know, right? Okay. (laughs) Police also find surveillance footage. I will say these police did a really good job of like hunting things down Mm -hmm. and making use of everything that they had possible to Mm -hmm. try to like figure out these two people's involvement with Sydney. Mm -hmm. So they hunt down surveillance footage of Bailey and Aubrey. And on the day of November 15th, which is the day that Sydney goes missing, they find that Bailey and Aubrey go to a Home Depot at around like 1030 that morning. And they're seen buying trash bags, bottles of bleach, a hacksaw, drop cloths, and tin snips, which are like these big giant scissors that are used for cutting sheet metal. Real creepy looking. So I guess I'm glad, or not, I'm glad, um, not the good word for that. I guess it's good that they didn't go to the Menards, because if they had gone to the Menards, then Sydney may have recognized them. Hang on. Oh, I'm hang sorry. on. <laughs> okay, so this is the morning of the 15th. This is the morning she goes missing. She's alive, okay? This is mm. before the date, before that evening, all of that. Sydney's still alive, and they're making these purchases already at 1030 that morning. So then they find surveillance footage of Aubrey, Bailey's boyfriend, going to the Menards (gasps) while Sydney is working. He doesn't like buy anything. He doesn't interact with her, but he's watching her. Oh, interesting. Very creepy. And as far Mm -hmm. as we know, Sydney doesn't know Aubrey. Right. Right. Because she's gone on one date with Bailey. She's been communicating with her on Tinder and through messages. So he's going to like, I don't know, scope her out, Mm -hmm. see if he likes her. I don't know. It's very creepy. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, while the police are obtaining all of this like surveillance and the stuff from their apartment, Bailey and Aubrey start posting videos on a joint Facebook account. And they are crazy. So they're talking about how the police are trying to make it sound like they're on the run and that they're, they have something to do with this Sydney and her disappearance, but they're really not. They're really being fully mm. cooperative. They have nothing to do with Sydney or her disappearance. And they're like, the police are after us. Like, we're not violent criminals. They're ruining our lives. Like, we can't work. We can't go home. Wah, wah, wah. I watched the videos and they're, they're like 10 minutes long. There's a couple of them. One has been taken down. It was hard to find, but I did find it. But they're just honestly a lot of like this Aubrey guy rambling Mm -hmm. about like Mm -hmm. how bad his life is and how it's just so ruined. But so anyway, they're posting all these videos. The police get their cell phone number and they're able to ping off towers and they find them in Branson, Missouri. Oh, I know where that is. Branson, Missouri. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, I haven't been there, but we're just just in another state. (laughs) Being totally cooperative, you know, not on the run at all. uh uh So on November 30th, they're both arrested. But they're arrested on warrants that are related to their previous charges. So remember, they have criminal histories. They're not supposed to be in Branson, Mm -hmm. Missouri. So they're able to arrest them based on those uh, warrants. And they're both transported back to Nebraska. Like, is it a violation of their parole? I think so. It doesn't they, specifically say that, things, yeah. but it says mm-hmm. on unrelated warrants, they're arrested. Right. So, because everything that they have related to Sydney, first of all, they don't know what happened to Sydney. She's just gone at this point. Mm-hmm. And anything that's related to them, it's like very circumstantial. They have messages, they have, they know they were the last ones to see her. They have the mm-hmm. surveillance, but that's it. They don't really have, they don't know what happened to her and they don't have any evidence to link them. So they're able, thankfully, to get them on these other charges and get them into custody. Mm -hmm. But then on December 4th of 2017, in an area about 90 miles from Lincoln, Sydney's remains were found. Oh, Sydney had been dismembered 
and placed in 13 different garbage bags, and her remains were scattered around multiple wooded areas. Oh, my. It actually took searchers two or three days to recover all of her remains because they were like just – it was awful. So, And everything was recovered except for part of one of her arms. Hmm. She was immediately able to be identified based on that tattoo that she had on her forearm that read, everything will be wonderful someday. And Mm -hmm. I think a couple other tattoos that she also had. So So, police were able to determine that Bailey's phone had pinged near where the remains were found on November 16th, the day after Sydney went missing. They also found Bailey's DNA on parts of Sydney's body or like things that were with her body. Mm -hmm. So Sydney's cause of death was determined to be suffocation by strangulation. It was very clear that she had some defensive wounds. So she had fought. It's believed that she had been killed shortly after arriving to the apartment on the night of November 15th, had been dismembered after her death. And then the body parts scattered the next day. Hmm. when the cell phone pinged in those areas. So Bailey and Aubrey were both charged with first-degree murder, improper disposal of human remains, and conspiracy to commit murder. Improper disposal? There's a proper way? Well, I mean, I guess that's like if you bury them in a legal way. (laughs) Right. Yeah, like I feel like any disposal by someone other than an official person. Just the word disposal. Right. Yeah. Sounds pretty improper to me. But it's like, well, yes. We lay them to rest. That's what we do mm-hmm. properly. Yeah. So Aubrey confesses immediately. He's like, I did mm. it. I killed her. I killed Sydney. Now, Aubrey says that Sydney had come to the apartment to see him and that the two of them had participated in some consensual BDSM acts that included strangulation. He claims that he accidentally killed Sydney with an extension cord during erotic asphyxiation and that he then panicked and decided that he had to dismember her body in order to get it out of his apartment without anyone seeing. Hmm. Aubrey claims that Bailey had nothing to do with Sydney's death. She wasn't home. She wasn't even there and that she only helped him dispose of the body and clean up afterwards. So, oh, yes. Right. Of course, Bailey is like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what happened. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. She completely corroborates the story. She says that she wasn't home. She came home. She Sydney was dead. Aubrey was freaking out. And so she helped him. So clearly, during all of this time when they were on the run, you know, being fully cooperative with police, they had decided that Aubrey was going to take the, f- the blame for this. Mm-hmm. He was going to take the fall. And this was the story that they had come up with. So, well, he's 51. He's lived his life. <laughs> oh my gosh. 51 is not old. I'm just kidding. But he's not 27. Right. Okay. And he's, he's taken one for the team. He loves his, he loves mm-hmm. his girlfriend, Bailey. So Bailey pled not guilty and Aubrey pled guilty to the charges. Okay. Obviously, like you said, we have to call BS. It doesn't make any sense. We have surveillance footage of them buying items to kill and dismember a body before Sydney even came over to their house. He goes and like scopes Sydney out and is being super creepy at her job that day. That doesn't, I mean, that doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense with his story. All of that shows clear premeditation. And also the messages that they have between Sydney and Bailey, there's no mention of Aubrey, none. Mm -hmm. So why would she go to their house to have sex with him when for all we know, she doesn't even know he exists. She doesn't even know that she has a boyfriend or his name or anything, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. So while they're awaiting trial, Aubrey suffers from several heart attacks and strokes and he actually becomes like wheelchair bound during hmm. during the time. But he does go on trial in June of 2019. Now, hold on to your pants. Because <laughs> it's about okay. to get weird. Okay. During the trial, three women testify against Aubrey. They remain anonymous. 
even in court records, they are anonymous. But all of the women were in their early 20s, and they all claimed to have met Bailey through Tinder. She introduces them to her sugar daddy, in quotes, Aubrey, and says that he was the leader of a sex cult. They were given expensive clothing. They were taken to spas. They were given cell phones, drugs, weekly allowances, all in exchange for having group sex with Aubrey and Bailey, who they called mommy and daddy. Oh my word. Huh. What in the holy, <laughs> oh goodness gracious. <laughs> so they all testify that they were being controlled and that they were sometimes locked inside the couple's home. They were not allowed to wear clothing while they were in their home. They had to ask permission for anything that they did. They had to check in every couple hours around the clock. If they ever did anything that Aubrey and Bailey didn't like or disapproved of, they would be punished. The women said that Aubrey claimed to be a vampire and that they were his witches, which apparently they believed at some what point during this. And they- How long were was all of this going on? I with think them? a while, like f definitely months for sure. Yes. I mean, they said they get weekly allowance and all that. So I'm assuming it had to be like an extended period of time. It wasn't just like a week and they were like, okay, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, this went on for some period right. of time. And they all three testified that they truly believed that Aubrey had supernatural powers. They all believed this, that he may, he may be a vampire. They claimed that Aubrey and Bailey would often talk about torturing and killing other people in order to gain more powers. But thankfully, these women, all of these women, were able to get out of this mm -hmm. crazy, weird, abusive situation not long before Sydney was killed, though. So like some oh. like one of them, I think it said that she didn't it was like weeks before that she oh, had finally like was like, I'm out. I'm out. It's freaking weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I did not see that coming. No. Also during the trial, this is crazy too. While all crazier. This, yes. <laughs> while all of this wacky testimony was going on, Aubrey stood up from his wheelchair, slit his own throat with a homemade weapon, and yelled, Bailey is innocent. I curse you all. That's what happened. It's on video. What? It happened. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine being a person in this courtroom. Did, you didn't see the video. Did you? I sure did. They must have blacked out. Well, you happened. couldn't see him very much. No. I mean, it's oh. the video is like pointed at the person at the wit in the witness box and he's off to the side. And then as soon as there's like a kerfluffle over there and he they scan the um they move the camera over immediately and he's like on the ground and people are like on top of him trying to help him. Holy Crazy. cow. What in the, this guy, this guy, <laughs> this Aubrey guy. Okay. Eek. So thankfully he didn't injure himself very badly and he was able to recover. So the trial just resumed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. They keep on keeping on here. Um, after three weeks of a trial, in July of 2019, Aubrey was found guilty of all charges. And in June of 2021, he had his sentencing hearing. At this hearing, he testified. And he says again that he acted alone, but that he did kill Sydney on purpose because he had she was brought into the home. He offered her $5,000 to be one of his witches but she refused to participate in this sex cult and he was afraid that she was going to expose him. So he killed her on purpose, strangled mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. and then dismembered her, which I don't, that's a, that's like a third story again. So like the first right. one, it was accidental. The second like theory we have is that is something, a sacrifice for the sex cult. And then the third one is that he had to kill her so that she wouldn't expose him. Honestly, this is the one I believe the most because it it makes sense. Like if she's like no, and he's already given her information about this cult that he has. Well, clearly the guy's crazy enough to be like she's going to go tell somebody, and I got to get rid of her. Yeah, possibly. So, anyway, Aubrey was sentenced to death. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, big sentence for him. So Bailey, 
you know, our other little friend here, Bailey, Mm -hmm. she went on trial in September of 2020. She continued to claim that she had nothing to do with Sydney's death and that she only helped Aubrey after the fact. However, her DNA was found on several items that were found near Sydney's remains, like a latex glove. And there was like a couple places that it was very clear she had been a part of the process. And it was also clear from like the Tinder and text messages that Bailey was the one who had lured Sydney into their apartment right. and to her death. So she was also found guilty of all charges. Bailey was just sentenced on November 8th of 2021. And she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Oh my gosh. Wow. And that is the story of Tin Sydney Loof. Holy cow. Yes. That mm. Mm. what I think is weird. Well, the whole freaking thing is weird. Yeah. But <laughs> which but, part? Right. I think it's interesting that they these other women, they lured them in the same way that they did Sydney and just let and lived with them. They were a part of their cult. Right. But the thing that makes me question that last theory, how Aubrey was like, well, I lured her here and then I had to kill her because she was going to expose me. He bought stuff to kill her that morning at the Home Depot. So it's almost like it was a sacrifice in some way in his head or like they had planned to do it. And I I think they planned it. But I don't know why. I don't know why they lured these other women and were like, be a part of our cult and you can live with us. And then her, it was like, she was dead within 30 minutes of arriving at that apartment, the police think. So I don't know why they did that. Maybe because the other girls left. And so they were like, well, we're not going to be able to have a sex cult. So we may as well just do these sacrifices to get power. Oh, I don't know. Okay. That's interesting. So I was thinking more along the lines of, Um, they clearly are not sure if people are going to accept their offer. And so they're prepared to get rid of this person if that's the case. And is it possible that they had gotten those supplies to previously when asking all these other women, we just don't know because they aren't dead. And so we didn't have to go back and like look at surveillance or whatever. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. know. That's another thing that I wonder too is about these other women. I wonder if Aubrey and Bailey will ever actually be charged or punished for the Mm -hmm. abuse of these other women. Right. Is there a statute of limitations on that? Which I'm sure there is, but they can't be that. We can't be that far out. No, this happened in 2017. Yeah. And we know that at least one of the women was there living in this abusive sex cult relationship in 2017. Right. So no. And I imagine it's like 15 years or something. Maybe like they that. don't want to press either. charges. Maybe the women don't want to press charges because then they won't be anonymous anymore or something. I mean, I guess that's a possibility, but yeah, and dude they're should be already punished for that. Like he's on death and she's there for life, so maybe it's like, well, they got their punishment yeah. for what they did to us. Yeah, they're already and, in the clink. Yeah. Jeez. Also, and I forgot to mention this, I picked the story. Oh, this is one of yours. It's not a suggestion. This was me. I totally picked this. And I have been following this story forever. And they just sentenced, they both of the, Bailey and Aubrey just both got sentenced this year in 2021. So I had to wait. Right. And so now it's, uh, yeah, so I've been waiting. I have been following this story for a long time. So, okay. So you you found it somehow, like whatever, probably just randomly Googling. You're like, oh, that looks like an interesting story. But did you know the craziness? Like, or did you just know the basics? Like this girl went missing, these guys, these two killed her. And then you like, as you dove into the research, found out about this witch's thing and the yelling in the court and like whatever. That Right. I did not know about the sex cult. That was something that came later. That was a surprise that I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Definitely right. keeping in this story in my back pocket. And then uh, the trial, when that happened, I was actually following his trial as it was happening. And so I saw the news like the day that it happened mm-hmm. because I had a Google alert and it was like, oh, his trial happened. Here's a news article for it. And it popped up and I was like, oh, 
Oh my gosh, he's bananas. <laughs> oh my, yeah, no kidding. Jeez. Yes. So this is one that I have been following for quite some time. And I am very glad that this family has gotten justice for Sweet Sydney. But mm-hmm. what a horrific, like, whew. I mean, she just was meeting this girl on Tinder. No clue. Right. Like, super excited about having this new friend. And meanwhile, they're like crazy sex cult vampire witches. Oh my gosh. Somebody make a shirt. What a statement. Yeah. <laughs> like, sex cult vampire witches. Right. <laughs> oh, please, that's what the shirt. Please join my crazy sex cult vampire witches. No. It has to be cult at the end. Hashtag Tinder. That doesn't. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. Scary. So, Scary guys. Yeah. I've never used any of those like dating apps or whatever, any of that kind of stuff. I mean, I didn't ha- have a need to. I, I met and married my husband, I think, before they were even a thing. For sure. I mean, I mean I'm sure there was Craigslist and Craigslist. Want ads or Match.com whatever. Match.com's been around for Match. a long time. Okay. Like, okay. So Match mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But there was also like, wasn't there like another like ad in the, like you could put an ad in the newspaper, wasn't there? Yeah. That, personal that? ad. Personal ads. I couldn't think of the name. That's why I said Craigslist. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure people meet people on Craigslist, Craigslist too. Anyway, wasn't a part of any of that, thankfully. And I really, I know that there has been success stories, guys. I know, I get it. But but there's also the scare been these kind of stories. <laughs> the living, I don't know, poop out of you, like that this could happen. Mm-hmm. Like social media, these things are so scary. They are scary to me, terribly scary. And it, yeah, it's crazy. So guys, come on. Just be careful. Yeah. Bring a friend. Bring a friend for like a month on all of the dates. Yes. <laughs> you know, like make sure this person is for real, like in your background. Yeah. Uh, they could be like, your friends could be at the same place. Don't go to their place after two dates. Like, oh. I mean, there are, t- there are terrible people on these apps. Yeah. It is true. There's also amazing people like Sydney. I know. Who are like, I know. You know, and but yeah, you never know. You're right, and it's just it's the world we live in. Hide in your closets. Hide in there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in there and say. hide. Mm-hmm. Hence our tagline, guys. Yes, oh. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, anyway, but rest well, in peace, Sydney. Yes, we're so sorry for your loss to her family. She seemed awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well, Bailey for and bringing Aubrey that. suck. Yes. Yes. And and they used Audrey as the name, right? I thought that was interesting too. Yeah. They went I thought that like a little twist. Aubrey. That could have Audrey. been a way of them like um kind of using that it was all uh, Aubrey's fault because really the name was Audrey on there, but oh whoops, we typoed it or something, you know. Right. So that was a way of them saying, Yeah, Bailey had nothing to do with it, even though Clearly, Sydney was telling them that they were, she was meeting up with a girl. And the phone the tracked back to Bailey. It wasn't Audrey's right. phone. It was Bailey's yeah. phone. So anyway, people are just stupid sometimes too. Mm-hmm. Think about like all of the different ways it could lead back to them or whatever. Even when you try to plan it, if that's what they did, we don't know. But even if you right. do, like it's not going to go well. You're going to get caught, okay? Mm-hmm. Because you're going to have family members like Sydney's family members and friends like Sydney's friends. They're going to hunt you down. Yeah. You're going to get caught. Yeah. Gosh. Anyways. Well, thank you for bringing the story to us. You're welcome. We all appreciate it. And for the warning, um, yes. just be careful, people. Yeah. Be, watch Head out. on a swivel. Yeah. And just, you know, I mean, really the only thing to say to any of this is the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets.